I'm Adam. And I'm Acorn. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Hey, Adam. Have you ever noticed how libraries are like giant treasure troves of knowledge just waiting to be devoured? Oh, absolutely. Libraries are amazing places. So much to learn, so many stories to explore. And don't even get me started on the smell of old books. It's like catnip for bookworms. True, it's a scent that just screams adventure and discovery. You know what would make libraries even better, though? What's that? Hot sauce dispensers. Picture this. You're reading a thrilling mystery novel, and when things start heating up, you add a little extra spice to the plot. I'm not sure if adding spice to books is what we're aiming for in the library. But think about it, Adam. You could have different levels of heat for different genres. Mild for romance, medium for drama, and extra hot for action-packed thrillers. Yeah, I think we'll stick to keeping books spicy with engaging plot and dynamic characters. In today's book, everything outside is covered in snow, and no one comes to the library. Will Library Fish be brave enough to venture outside her fishbowl for the very first time and explore the library she calls home? Let's get started. The Library Fish, written by Alyssa Satin Caposilli, illustrated by Gladys Jose. Once there was a fish. She was not an ordinary fish. She didn't live in the sea or the ocean. She didn't live in a river or lake. In fact, when Mr. Hughes, the librarian, found her, he said, I'm not quite sure where you came from, but if you love stories, you've come to the right place. Some libraries have their lions, but this library will have you, fish. Hard as it might be to believe, Mr. Hughes was sure the fish wiggled her tail. She may have even smiled. From that day on, she was known as Library Fish. She made her home on the desk of Mr. Hughes. It was the perfect place to welcome all the visitors to the library. From where she sat, Library Fish could check each book that was borrowed and returned. Library Fish quickly grew to love story time. Mr. Hughes read stories that made her laugh out loud. He read poems that filled her with wonder. Mr. Hughes read in a bold voice. He read in a whisper. Library Fish met characters who were brave and kind, while others were daring, shy, or inventive. Library Fish learned about distant people she might visit one day. Of course, Library Fish enjoyed an outing too. She loved days spent on the bookmobile. Winding through busy streets, Library Fish could feel the excitement of the crowd awaiting their arrival. Mr. Hughes made sure everyone found just the right book. He always chose something wonderful to read aloud too. Hard as it might be to believe, Library Fish was certain the bookmobile enjoyed a good story as much as she did. She could feel his engine rumble with joy. I want an adventure. Poetry, please. I need a book for the road. Libros en Espanol, por favor. Are there any new graphic novels? Any books about puppies? What's the latest in the Wizzy Wizard series? I think meerkats are cool. I'm just learning to read. One morning, Library Fish awoke bright and early. She waited for Mr. Hughes to arrive with his usual good morning, Library Fish. She waited and waited, but the library doors remained closed. Where could Mr. Hughes be? Library Fish looked out over the shelves. Every book sat patiently in its place. She looked out of the long windows. Could it be? There's nothing quite like curling up with a good book and a bucket of popcorn. The classics, you know. Charlotte's Bacon, Hamlet, and The Great Squeak, you name it. Um, I think you mean Charlotte's Web, Hamlet, and The Great Gatsby. Tomato, tomato, my dear friend. The important thing is the adventure within those pages. Have you ever read Animal Farm? Oh, indeed, the thrilling tale of rebellion and politics reminded me of the time I staged a coup in the trough over who gets the last apple core. Let's hope our farm stays democratic. What's your favorite book? Oh, that's a tough one. But I'd have to say Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. 
It's a fantastic journey into the imagination. Ah, a book about exploring the wilderness. I can relate. Just the other day I ventured into the forbidden territory of the kitchen and discovered a wonders of the pantry. Sounds like you're quite the adventurer yourself. I've faced many trials and tribulations, like the time I tried to read War and Peace. Let me tell you, that book is longer than a pig's nap on a hot summer day. There, for as far as she could see, was snow, thick snow, falling faster and harder than library fish had ever seen before. It reminded her of a story Mr. Hughes read, where snow fell so high and wide, it made busy city streets come to a stop. Could snow make the library come to a stop too? Library fish swam around her bowl. She hummed a tune. She did some fancy spins. The snow kept falling. The library grew quieter and quieter. There was only one thing to do. The library may be closed on the outside, said the library fish, but it's always open on the inside. There's a story waiting for me. I just have to find it. Library fish jumped. She leaped. She wiggled. She didn't get far at all. Hmm, she said. Library fish remembered the story of a magic beanstalk. She reached and stretched. She climbed to the tip top of her bowl until she slid down with a plop. Ah, she sighed. Maybe I can fly up, up and away like a superhero, said Library Fish. The thing was, she didn't have a cape. Library Fish looked out of her bowl. The moon peeked through the snowfall. That's it, said Library Fish. If a rocket ship can soar to the moon, maybe I can. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! She shouted. And with one big splash, Library Fish landed safely at the foot of a towering stack of books. Filled with all the possibility of a great story, she set off at once. Library Fish looked over the book cart. Do you ever get so bored that you start counting the number of blades of grass in your backyard? Not quite. But I do recall this one time during summer break when I was so bored, I tried to organize my sock drawer by color and pattern. Oh man, that's rough. I once got so bored that I challenged a butterfly to a staring contest. Needless to say, neither of us blinked. You know what takes the cake? One rainy afternoon, I was so bored that I started teaching math to my houseplants. Teaching math to houseplants? You win, but... Hey, at least they can count on you for some intellectual stimulation. Thanks, Acorn. You know, boredom can really bring out the creativity in us. Some of the books were too high to reach. Some were too heavy. Library fish went up and down the aisles. She passed shelf after shelf until she found just what she was looking for. There, in the storytime corner, were plenty of books ready for reading. Library Fish settled into a comfortable, cozy spot. She opened cover after cover. She turned page after page. She pored over wonderful illustrations. Before long, something extraordinary happened. Library Fish was just about to reach for one more story when she heard it. First, beep, then honk, then vroom vroom. Why didn't I think of this sooner? Library Fish said with a giggle, I'm not the only one around here who loves a good story. Library Fish chose some of her very favorite books, and although it had already been a night filled with adventures, she was sure that it was time for just a few more. Library Fish read in a bold voice. She read in a whisper. She read until she laughed out loud. She read it until she felt the bookmobile's engine rumble with joy. And before long, something extraordinary happened again. When the first rays of sun began to shine, a very tired library fish climbed back into her bowl. She dreamed wonderful dreams until good morning library fish said mr hughes are you ready to welcome our visitors she was ready indeed 
Library Fish smiled. She wiggled her tail. Hard as it might be to believe, Mr. Hughes was sure Library Fish yawned too. Hello, Library Fish. I missed you, Library Fish. So what's your idea of a perfect snow day, Acorn? Well, picture this. A blanket of fresh snow covering the ground, the sun shining bright, and me gracefully sliding down the hills on my sled like a pro. I can totally picture that. You must be the king of sledding. You bet. But let me tell you about this one day, snow day when I decided to show off my skiing skills. Skiing? I didn't know pigs could ski. Oh, we can do anything if we set our minds to it. So there I was, gliding down the slopes like a champion, when suddenly I hit a bump and went airborne. Oh man, what happened next? Well, let's just say I ended up making a snow angel involuntarily. It was quite the sight. I wish I could have seen that. But hey, next time we have a snow day, I'll challenge you to a sledding race, pig versus teacher. Just be prepared to eat my snow dust. It may be a while, we don't get much snow in Texas. But what doesn't have to be a while is if you come back and watch another of our videos. Please like and subscribe. I'm Adam. And I'm Acorn. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Did you know Andrew Carnegie was a one-man library funding machine? The wealthy industrialist donated $55 million, or about $1.6 billion in today's dollars, to open an astonishing 2,509 libraries worldwide, including 1,679 in the United States.